I'm going to tell you a story today about Archimedes, this wonderful mathematician of whom we know not very much. Of all the ancient mathematicians, we know more about Archimedes than any of the others, but it's still not a lot. But we do know that he made incredible discoveries. One of them was in exploring parabolas. Now, what's a parabola? That's a parabola. That's another parabola. A fountain creates parabolas. You dive off a diving board, you fall in a parabolic curve. And he wanted to know about parabolas. Archimedes would never have seen this parabola. They didn't have algebra in his day, okay? And they didn't have graphs in his day. However, this is a parabola, and it's generated by this formula y equals x squared. And the y axis is going up 10 times as fast as the x-axis is going along. So, y equals x squared. So if x is 10, y would be 10, 10, 100, and that's there, corresponds to the y. So all these dots are generated like that, and you've got a parabolic curve. Okay, this is quite remarkable, because it's actually a calculator. I'll show you a minute. Brady, can you give me two numbers less than 15? All right, how about 12 and 5? Okay, 12 and 5. So I'm going to put a line through the 12. That's it, 5 and 12. And we'll put a line through there. It goes through 60. 5 twelves is 60. So this is an automatic calculator. Isn't it great? Now, this parabolic curve is set in a rectangle, you can see. And what Archimedes wanted to know was if you put a parabolic curve in a rectangle, What's the comparison between the area inside the curve and the area outside the curve? What's the ratio? He didn't know, he wanted to find out. And he had a few tools up his sleeve. One thing he knew about was the lever. And I'm gonna make a lever. This is a normal ruler, and I balanced it on the six inch mark, so it balances. And if I take a domino and put a domino in each end, they will balance, oops, they will balance if I do it properly. They will balance, okay? Look at that. But that's because that's six inches times one, six inches times one. But you could do it with three dominoes and make those balance by putting them there. And that balances. Why? Because that's six times one, and that is two inches times three. Two times three is six, one times six is six. So it balances. So he knew about levers. The other thing he knew about was centers of gravity. He knew the center of gravity of a triangle. And there, I found the center of gravity of this triangle. You can try this with any triangle you make. It doesn't have to be a right angle. Make it out of cardboard. But how does it work? What you do is you take the midpoint of each side and connect them to the angle opposite. And you'll get three lines that coincide at one point. And that happens to be the center of gravity of the triangle. And he knew about that. This was found, or a version of it was found. Can you see? It's sort of a bent triangle. Uh, um, Galileo knew about this, so it's been around a long time. Okay. Why was it on the skew? Well, I think it's because, can you see, this is a parabolic section here, and there's a triangle inside it, okay? Now, why is it on the skew? He wanted to show that no matter how you cut a slice with a straight line off a parabolic section, if you have a triangle inside it or a rectangle outside it, the ratio is all the same, and that's what he was looking for. So I think that's why he put it on the skew after he discovered it. So I've drawn it again here, and you see you've got a parabolic section with a triangle inside it, ABC. So what's the ratio between the triangle and the parabolic curve? Well, I can put that in a rectangle, which is twice the size of the triangle. Same base and same height, so it's twice the triangle. Or he thought what I could do is actually double the size of the triangle. Doubling the height here with the same base, it must be double the size of that triangle and ask himself, so what's the ratio between this triangle and the parabolic section? Or why don't I go even further? Why is it going further? I'll explain that later. Why don't we go even further, he said, and double the height of that. So we've doubled that, we've doubled that, 
drawn that here, and now this triangle, twice the height, same base, so it's four times that triangle in size. What is the ratio in area between that and the parallel section? Well, that's where he got to. So where did he go to next? He used the tools he already understood about. He used the lever. So he took the same diagram and doubled the length of this. I named that point F. Why? Because it stands for fulcrum. And he wanted to make a seesaw balance there. And then he took a line, just dropped it down, M-O, and found that that line where it crossed the parabolic section, he could call P-O. And he thought about this. Wouldn't it be lovely if a line had weight? Hang on, hang on, where are we going? We know from geometry that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line which has no width, so it can't have weight. But he said, what if it had? And what if I dropped every conceivable MO down this triangle until I blotted it out with ink and it had weight? Now, for every MO, there's a PO that crosses the parabolic section. Why don't I take all those POs and put them up here at the end of my balance? Would it balance this triangle that's still there? And he said, I bet it does, but it would only balance at the balance point, which is the center of gravity of this triangle, which is two thirds to one third along there, two thirds to one third along there, and two thirds to one third along there, point X. And it should balance, which means, can you see, because that's only one third, that's three times as far. So this triangle must weigh three times as much as the parabolic section. So half of it must weigh one and a half times as much as the parabolic section. So half of that must mean that the triangle ABC is three quarters the area of the parabolic section. And he was right. Incredible intellect from an absolute genius. The quite amazing thing about this is what Archimedes gave a line weight, right? And decided that all those lines would equal the triangle and gave them weight. But what he was doing was actually inventing calculus, whereby you measure tinier and tinier pieces and put them all together. But calculus wasn't going to be invented for another 2,000 years. And Carl Friedrich Gauss said, oh, the idiot, he discovered calculus and he let it go through his fingers. So sad. And 2,000 years earlier than anybody else. This video was supported by Brilliant. Look, it's so hard choosing which mathematics or science course to choose when you log into Brilliant. Today, let's go for some geometry fundamentals. Now look, I'm glad you watched number five videos, but there's something next level about answering questions and actually interacting with the stuff on the screen, like this. Brilliant is lovingly designed, and everything's so clean, simple, clever. Really love it. Now to check out more, go to brilliant.org slash number file. That slash number file lets them know you came from here, and perhaps more importantly, gets you 20% off a premium subscription. And remember, if and when you finally finish with all this geometry, there's so much more to do. I've color coded it for different places that I've lived. Cause in my memories, you know, I kind of like almost catalog things that way. You know, so this is, you know, till I was eight years old, I lived here in Torrance and then I moved to Brea. Both those are in California, you know, and then this is like college. 